Okay, now we want to touch a little bit more on this shroud of Turin. Now, we wrote an article in 2010. I actually compiled these these photographs and these pictures here. I hope you can see that well. This is, um, and we got some videos as well. Now, first I want to state for the record, as far as this Shroud of Turin thing, that we, like many people, were skeptical. And so for some years, we also avoided any kind of dealing with this Shroud of Turin matter because we know that there's been a lot of fake relics and a lot of faking and whitewashing of things. And to many of us, this would appear to be another ideal example. Now, what you're looking at right here is the bronze is a three-dimensional bronze statue um, was a lifelike um, replica was made based on this particular image right here, based on the Shroud of Turin, based on this particular image, but the full body, the full body type, I think we have a full body um, one, and they see the front and the back. So the Vatican and certain designers, artists, they wanted to see what this image on the Shroud of Turin would look like in a three-dimensional model. So what they basically did was get some artists and use so-called scientific accuracy, seeing they have computers and a lot of other um, toys and advanced equipment, to do as best as they could and get a three-dimensional um, image. And so here we have in a document from 2010 we say that the shroud, it validates the Rastafarian claims, or the Rastafari, the claims of Ainai Rastafari concerning the King of Kings, concerning Kedamawi Haile Selassie and his Christ, that the Shroud of Turin actually validates it. Now, once again, we want to state, as a disclaimer, and for the record, that we haven't been, and we were not Shroud of Turin buffs. In fact, if you look at unbiasedly the information for and against, it almost seems to be like a, a push and pull, almost a tug of war between those who say that the Shroud of Turin is a, is a genuine thing. And we could probably see their own faith-based or religious motivations in that. And then others, you know, a lot of the Christians said without the resurrection, then our whole religion and everything is a, is false and is a lie. So some would say, well, the Christians say that. As people probably would say that once we present um, our exhibit, and, and our exhibit is based on the available data, the available information, and comparing, comparative, using the comparative process of the photographic images from the Shroud of Turin, as well as certain images of His Imperial Majesty, Moa and Bezalem Negeda Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, Siyuma Egeziadihir, the elect of God, Negus Neges the Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the figure that is on the right hand right here. And now this, of course, is a is an artist, uh, Rastafari, or Rastafari-inspired artist rendition based on the Ethiopian, ancient Ethiopic church and the, some would say, Byzantine, Byzantium style images of, of Christ right here with the Nazarene um, locks here, okay? Now, let's go back to that 2010 uh, PDF, what we call it, we say that the Shroud validates Rastafarian claims. So we were not Shroud of Turin people, you know, I mean, we looked at the evidence and honestly speaking, it seemed to be almost 50-50, you understand, 50-50, roughly, probably maybe 60-40, you know, going back and forth. When, and there's a particular video that we have, uh, Christian, I think, TBN played it, and it's interesting based on that, of course, they're presenting certain um, 
evidence from a Christian point of view to basically back up the theological or the biblical um, teaching and doctrine of the resurrection and that Christ actually did our black Lord and Savior, although they view him whitewashed as a European, and we're going to also dispel that lie as well. Um, so they're moving from that perspective. Well, the good thing about the documentary that we've seen, and we're going to try to make it available as well at, as the, at the doc uh, videos on the www.lojsociety.org site, and we'll try to point to as soon as we bring all that information, as well as a video of this particular bronze, lifelike um, um recreation that they were able to um, um, make based on, they said that the shroud is anatomically correct. And um, as we said, this right here, we have a video which, which actually shows this particular, it was like some Fox News. We mentioned it in another lecture that was on Fox News, actually. Um, and they showed it one time on Fox News when it was at the Vatican. And they said, like, this is one of the Vatican super secrets. Maybe they're bringing it out now. Maybe now when this comes out, they'll put it back up and hide it. And, in fact, we have pointed out right here that when you look at this particular um, three-dimensional statue based on an image, based on the dimensions of and the details in the Shroud of Turin, you can see right here that the, the hair is matted and even dreadlocked. This is one of the curious features, although they'll say it's because of the blood, so forth and so on. But remember, this is after the body of Christ was washed and wrapped up, so forth and so on. But you can clearly see the hair and the matted detail, the knotty, as we would say, the knotty detail. Let's just get a little bit closer in this particular image here so you can see exactly what we mean. So you can see the knotty the knotty detail um, here as well, as you can see clearly. You can see how the hair is parted or, and how it comes down and, and, and the hair of the face. But the very interesting thing about the shroud is when we pay attention to details, the Europeans will say it's a Caucasian male. And automatically that will turn off some of us. It's almost like when you look at it, Really, honestly, unless we tell you it's a shroud or it's a shroud image, it looks like Haile Selassie. This image actually looks like Haile Selassie. You, you know, um, look at the features, look at the face. The only key difference, really, is instead of having the, the Afro, the Ethio, the Ethio Afro, in other words, here is the Gwendala or the Gwendala, the, the dreadlocks or the locks are clearly featured right here. And we can look at the details of the face, and and um, this is an amazing image. When you see the video, the video is actually interesting. Like we said, we was able to get a copy of that particular video they showed on Fox News, and they said this is something that. And even the person was saying, "Wow, this is if this is true, how come we don't we don't bring it out?" And they said, "Well, the Vatican have its reasons for not bringing it out." Well, it's kind of obvious what some of the obvious reasons are that they don't bring it, you know, they don't bring it out. First of all, whether one agrees with the fact that it's a so-called dead ringer, as they would say, for his imperial majesty, and this is supposed to be the shroud of Jesus Christ right here, we can see very clearly the dreadlocks. We can see very clearly, and this is before dreadlocks, you know, dreadlocks became dreadlocks in the revelation of Rastafari and the crowning of Haile Selassie. In 19, in and about 1930, when the whole Rastafari movement first came to the the forefront and brought forward that revelation. So, this is some more of the pictures right here. This is an, uh, the same image but singular, right here, and this is the feet. In fact, when we first did the video a couple of years ago, we did a video on. Um, the bronze brass feet, you know, Revelation, where many of us would say that if you look in the book of Revelation, one of the proofs that um, Christ is black is based on the woolly hair, even based on the voice, as many waters, the base, the rich, the rich black voice. And, you know, we have the evidence of Hollywood and others when they got the ability to record, they would have black 
like even I think one time they had a janitor, somebody just record speaking because the new um, toys they had of microphone and sound recording for film just highlighted the black voices were ideally suited for that. So at that time during that particular documentary on the brass feet, you know, on the symbology of the brass feet, we came across this particular image. And this right here is the foot of the shroud image in three dimension right here. So we both get to see what brass is, the clear Ethiopian complexion of brass is very clear. So we thought that this would be a good presentation. Now, we say we would touch on this whole, some people say um, that Jesus was a Middle Eastern looking man. You know, in other words, he would look something like, this is what they what they would say, but this is basically a white or a pale Arab, the white, the European, the Arab, so called Arab Spring, Arab Fall, Arab Summer, whatever Arab all the Arab, the Arabs, the modern day Arabs. If you want to see what a real Arab or a real Arab or Ishmaelite would have looked like thousands of years ago in the sense of the biblical story of Abraham, you need to look at the Sudanese, for example or even the Somalians, for another example, to see the racial type of the biblical um, original descendants of uh, Ishmael, the son of Abraham. That's if you want to see what a real Arab, you understand, biblical Arab look like. But these are the pale and the white, um, the white or the pale skin um, Arabs who are actually descendant from the Euros. They're descendants of the Euros, the Europeans, the Greco, and the Romantic invasion of Kemet, known as Egypt. So when the 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 the, the Greco's after Alexander and and the Romans invaded and took over, they mixed with the people, so forth and so on, as they are wont to do in so many places wherever they go, and a new group, a mulatto group, comes out of it, and they become the intermediate people who rule between the native black or indigenous people, and then eventually these people start claiming like the whole culture is theirs, although they don't understand nothing about. Egypt. I mean, just ask a lot of these guys. They don't know nothing about it. And if you talk about them being black, they get offended. We should really be offended that they are stealing our ancestral identity. So that's one example of the presentation right there. And we're going to move forward to the no another example that we showed before in another video, but we actually decided to um, re-edit that video and um, we're going to show you a portion of it right now. So once again, the shroud, the shroud validates the Rastafarian claims. Now this helps us greatly to really weigh in favor of the authenticity of the, shroud, the shroud, not because we can find a direct uh, similarity to his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie, but because even the Christians in their documentary, they point out a lot of the naysaying arguments, and they basically rebut it with some scientific and other fact that also weighs in its favor. So with all of that concerning, so we, like we always said, the shroud issue, fact or fiction, you know, that's a, still a big discussion. But what we're saying is that as the line Jew society and I as Wendem Yadon or Ras Yadinos Tefari, is that the shroud, it actually validates the basic claims of Rastafari. I mean, and um, we're not, we, of course, we don't base our faith on the shroud. You know what I'm saying? But what we say is that the evidence that we find in the shroud of Turin, seeing that the Bible teaches that Jesus the Son or Yeshua the Son is the expressed image of the Father. That's what the Bible teaches, that Jesus Christos, Jesus the Son, is the expressed image of God the Father. Uh, another interesting thing when you look at the shroud, there's this V thing going on right here. We want to point that out. There's a, this V thing going on near the center of the picture. Now, of course, in the shroud image, the hands are folded, as you see right here. The hands are folded. But if you notice something right here, you might notice that there's this kind of, 
if you look at it from a certain distance, it's almost like when you look at the, the shroud image, if we would make it a little bit smaller, right, and put it like this right here, it's almost as though in the center he is doing this trinity type of hand sign that his majesty is doing. That's just another, that's not our major point, but that's just a, a, make it a footnote. That's a footnote right there. And so now, within the remaining time that we have in this, would you call them, let us show you, show you this right here. And um, we'll narrate it since, okay, we have to narrate it. We didn't ascribe any s sound to, to this just as of yet. So now what you see right here, is some cat some some basic images right here. We're gonna probably add sound to this, no doubt. Now, what we did was we selected. Of course, this is the few images that we have of the shroud, the shroud of Torin, right here. All right. They say it's a Caucasian man, you know, Caucasian male. We have the video where they say it's a Caucasian male. But then, note they also call the Ethiopians Caucasians. This is His Majesty, where we sought to layer it to point out the certain points of um, congruence or similarity in the basic features. Now, as we went forward, we're going to have a, a, a clearer demonstration for you. So they call the Ethiopians, Ethiopians are called Europeans by the European um, scientific, um, so forth and so on. Now, it's not because... Ethiopians come from Europeans, but actually the Europeans come from the ancient, um, come from the ancient Ethiopian, the ancient Ethiopian people. Since white comes out of black. Now this was an interesting fade over right here. Did you, did you, did you get this right here? Did you get this one right here? Now notice the face. Notice the, the main points of similarity. Notice for a moment. If we take it right here. You can see the face, the nose, the eyes, the cheekbones in particular, the mustache, and the hairline. As we fade it, fade it more. You see it right there. You see it right there. Do you see it? You see it right there. I mean, even when you can see the whole shroud, you can see even the shoulder position. You understand? The shoulder position is almost. Exact. See, when they say that the shroud is a Caucasian male, like I said, if a lot of brothers and sisters out there, because we have 400 plus years of this whitewashing, you know, this turn all oh, to fake white people trying these games. But now, look at this. Do you see that right there? Let's back it up right once again. You see how we sort to actually sharpen it up a little bit, and you can see right here as we move from this one into this one. Right into this one, and now scientifically, at that point right there, that's a that's a that's a that's a good point right there. That's a good point right there because you can see we have both of them accurately lined up. The lights and the darks accurately lined up. You understand? It's almost like the shroud is looking at you in a sense, and you see the mustache is similar. And let, let's just fade it back. Let's just fade it back a little bit. Now this is going from shroud. To, to his majesty, right? Going from shroud to his majesty. You see the shoulders? The shoulder point? Now, as we go forward even further, we're going to go from now the shroud to his majesty this way. Now, notice. You see how clearly the nose, the eyes. Now, it was easy for them to say, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a European. You understand? Or rather, they didn't say European, but they say a Caucasian. But then they call the Ethiopians Caucasians and, and Aryans too. Because they say look or they have white features, whatever like that. But really, um white people got Ethiopian features is the proper way to present it. Now you see how we are going from one image to the next image. You see the shoulder, you can even see the beard. It's like if his majesty grew along a beard there, you can see the beard, you can see the beard line, you can see the lip line, you can see the nose line, you can see the cheek line, you can see the eye the eye line, you can see the nose the same way. You can even see how the hair the the, the hair just goes from afro to the dreadlocks so or like the Abba Caduce Abba Caduce image. So once again we have a reference point right there. So this is why we are saying that the Shroud of Torin, 
from a Christian perspective, based on the arguments that have been made and the counter arguments who've said all sort of things to dismiss the shroud evidence, the Christians win the scientific argument because uh, people who have said, well, it's not for many reasons, for many years, a lot of these reasons seem to be the case. And then sufficient evidence was brought out to explain some of the so-called shroud um, anomalies the Shroud of Turin Anomalies. But now as we look at the Christians winning the argument vis-a-vis -vis the atheists or the agnostics or whatever concerning, and the scientists concerning the Shroud of Turin, what we find to be most interesting is basically the fact, let's, let's continue this going, is the fact that when we now examine, based on the evidence that we have available, to us, which is this sort of evidence from the pictures. Now here, again, is a, is a soft. We call this a soft blend. What you're going to see is a soft blend from a picture of His Majesty to the Shroud of Turin face image. And you can see it right there. If we pause it right there, you can see how the nose is coming in like it's his own face, like it's his own nose. The only difference, even the forehead, the margin from the eyebrow to the forehead is the same. The only difference is His Majesty has has what they would call an afro here, or the Ethiopian style afro, instead of the Bahitawi style dreads or locks. And so as we fade it more, you can see it come in more right here. You know, so we see both the image of the Son and the image of the Father in the Shroud of Turin image. I mean, even some of the other lines around the face you, you know what I mean? Our, our, our age lines is also significant. It's very. You remember when they crucified Christ and they said that um, after the resurrection, some did not really immediately know him. It's like you know somebody, but maybe they aged. Maybe they, you know, and crucifixion, wow, what a, what a stressful. You think you got stress. I think I got stress. The crucifixion, that's some real stress. Now, as you go further in, you can see how it fades over, even to the shroud almost looks right here. You see at this point, the shroud looks right here like he's wearing, he's wearing the suit, he's wearing the uniform. The person in the shroud is wearing the uniform. And in a sense, the person in the shroud is <laughs> wearing the uniform. So this is our first vid in this particular series. And once again, it's another fade, just so you can get um, used to it and say, okay, dismiss it if you would like. It's clear this is the features of his imperial match. It's clear he's an Ethiopian. He's a black man. From his, his woolly hair, you understand? His woolly hair, his brass as burned in the fire, complexion, so forth, and so on. So this is our presentation, brothers and sisters and others. I'd um, like to hear your... Um, Hear your comments about this or anything, any additions, you know, any other revelations concerning the King of Kings and his Christ. So, Shalom Ras Teferi.